Lesson 51, Jesus the Coming One In today's lesson, we find Jesus healing a man's servant, marveling at his great faith. He raises a young man back to life and restores him to his widowed mother. He does many notable miracles, confirming to John the Baptist that he is the coming one that Israel was expecting. Jesus speaks of John the Baptist's greatness and ministry and teaches a Pharisee named Simon about love and forgiveness. While Jesus was in Capernaum, a centurion sent his servants to ask Jesus to heal one of his servants who was sick and ready to die. When Jesus came near to the centurion's house, the centurion sent messengers saying Jesus did not need to come into his home because he did not feel worthy to have such a great man visit his house. He asked that Jesus would just speak a word and heal his servant, for he believed that Jesus had authority to command the sickness to leave, just as he had authority over others. Jesus marveled at the man's faith and said he had not found such great faith even in Israel. The greater our faith is, the more we can please God, and the scripture tells us that without faith it is impossible to please God. In the town of Nain, Jesus met a funeral procession carrying the coffin of a young man who had died. Jesus felt compassion for the mother who was a widow and had just lost her only son. He put his hand on the coffin to stop the procession and spoke to the young man saying to him, Arise. Then the young man that had died sat up and began to speak, and Jesus presented the young man back to his mother. This remarkable event caused a great stir among the people, and they all marveled, saying that a great prophet had come to them, and that God had visited his people Israel. The news of Jesus' power to heal and raise the dead spread throughout all the surrounding regions. It was a truly remarkable miracle that happened that day in Nain when Jesus rose a dead man back to life. However, there is an even greater miracle that God can perform in our lives. That is the miracle of the new birth when we trust in Jesus as our Savior. The Bible tells us that when a person believes in Jesus, he crosses over from death into life. This does not mean just physical life, but spiritual life which is eternal. The believer may die physically, but he will not die spiritually. He will live forever in the presence of God, and someday will be given a new resurrected body that is like the Lord Jesus' body. John the Baptist wanted to know if Jesus was indeed the promised coming one, and so he sent some of his friends to ask Jesus about this. Jesus was performing many miracles, healing all kinds of people, giving sight to the blind, and therefore told John's friends to let John know about these things. This would confirm by his works that he was indeed the expected coming one. Israel had been waiting for their Messiah for many centuries, and at last he had come to them. The miracles were a validation that he was the one whom the prophets had foretold. Isaiah and others had certainly spoken of the miraculous nature of the Messiah's ministry and how he would heal many and carry their sicknesses. After answering John's inquiry, Jesus spoke to the crowds about John and how people went out to see John. They did not go to view the wilderness or to see a king dressed in royal robes, they went to see a prophet of God. Jesus said that John was more than a prophet. He had the great ministry of preparing the way for the arrival of the Son of God. Jesus says that of all men born of women, none was greater than John the Baptist, and yet the least in the kingdom of God was greater than he. It is remarkable that John, a rather rough man living in the wilderness, who had no great miracles attached to his ministry, was considered the greatest of all men born into the world. John's greatness was due to the fact that he was the forerunner of Jesus and had the privilege to prepare the heart of the people to turn from their sins and to receive the coming Messiah. Not only great in the role and ministry he had, 
He also was a man more zealous in his lifestyle and preaching to honor God. He was greater than Abraham, David, Moses, and the prophet Daniel. This was a remarkable statement made about John the Baptist. We should learn from this that God is not looking for men who look well dressed, who live in palaces, who are rich in this world, or who can perform mighty signs and miracles. God looks for men who love righteousness and fear God more than they fear men who stand for the truth no matter what it costs them. Though a great man in this world, John was not greater than the least in heaven. In heaven, all have the privilege of being in the presence of God and are free from the influence of sin. This makes their position far greater than anyone on earth, no matter how great or holy they may seem. At Simon the Pharisee's home, Jesus was invited to dine but while they ate, a sinful woman entered the room and began to wash Jesus' feet with her tears and wipe his feet with her hair. She also anointed his feet with fragrant oil. This made Simon and his friends say in their hearts that Jesus could not be a prophet, for otherwise he would know this woman was a sinner and would never allow her to touch him. Jesus used a story to teach Simon about the relationship between love and forgiveness. The point he made was that the more a person was forgiven, the more they would love. The fact that the woman demonstrated much greater love than Simon did, for he did not wash Jesus' feet or anoint him with oil, but the woman had done this with her own tears and her fragrant oil. Her actions show that her sins were indeed forgiven, and this was clearly evidence because of her great love for Jesus. Therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Luke chapter 7 verse 47